guys, how's it going? It's Douglas here at Drown White Productions, bringing you another Screaming Ghost Face Collectors video. Today's video features some very elusive items, and while these items are hard to find, most of these items came out within the last year. I'm a little thirsty, and you know what would make me refreshed right now? How about a nice, tall can of Ghost Face Fanta? This is a weird one, guys. Out of all the things that I could see them crossing over Ghost Face with, I never necessarily thought that I would see Ghost Face printed on a soda can. But due to the amazing promotional cycle of the new Scream, here we have Ghostface on a Fanta can. Now, unfortunately, these weren't released in the US. These are freaking sweet. I know can collectors would be after these. Obviously, people who are screaming Ghostface collectors like myself would want these. I don't know why they didn't do something similar in the US, but they did release them in Mexico and Brazil. Brazil has a green package, or a green can rather. I haven't seen any of the other Fanta products in green from Brazil, but I have seen not only the cans from Mexico, but they have, I believe, cups and popcorn buckets as well. So yeah, very, very interesting. Yet again, have no clue why they didn't release something like this in the US. Also not sure why they decided to do a scream paired soda and it wasn't a cream soda, you know, a scream soda. But nonetheless, this is a very cool collectible and I have to give a massive thank you and a massive shout out to Eric Ramon, AKA Whiskey and Coke, for picking this up for me and sending it my way. I greatly appreciate it. This was actually something that was sent my way for my birthday and after I had done that birthday video and finished it, this arrived the next day. So I've been holding on to it for a while to show you guys in another video. Now that my thirst is quenched, I could sure go for some chewing. And that brings us to our next edible ghost face collectible. Here we have the long-awaited and well-loved Berries and Scream Cereal. So I want to go ahead and give a massive thank you to Horror Cosplayer or Sam Hain Photography over on Instagram for picking me up not only one of these boxes, but two of these boxes. Now the bad news here is unfortunately, as per usual, USPS will destroy a lot of my packages or they come in damaged. These came in with one of the stickers that says item received in damaged condition. So you know it's gonna be pretty bad when they put that on there. And unfortunately it was pretty bad. These boxes are no longer mint condition. They did get beat up quite a bit. This one is the better of the two. The bottom of this one's more messed up especially on this side. And then this one, more so at the top. So they're both damaged and damaged in different places. I picked up two of these to help Sean Clark out with a box in case he could not get one, but I believe he was able to get a box. So now I have two. I will probably just keep one completely sealed, original for the collection, of course. And then the other one, of course, we're gonna be doing a taste testing video that should be coming very, very soon. So stay on the lookout for that. Not a whole lot left to say on these, at least in this video. I'll try to save most of that for the actual review of this. But for those of you wondering, this was put out by Serial Killer Cafe in the UK. And unfortunately, you cannot really get these imported into the US unless you have a friend who's willing to help you out. All right, next up, we have some stuff that arrived in a recent package from my friend Keenan Beardy. Many of you out there probably recognize that name because Keenan's been featured a few different times on the channel. He's sold me different pieces out of his collection, whatever it may be, helped me out with some pieces closer to him. And today we have, yet again, some pieces that he had to sell. He came to me offering them to me and I picked them up and he included a few extras. So let's go ahead and take a look. So I guess let's take a look at the extras first. This one was the one that probably made me the happiest and the most excited. So. As many of you out there probably know, I just recently did the video talking about different Scream and Ghostface bootleg masks, talking about some of the different terrible, terrible ones throughout the years, making fun of those. And this was just sent in with this package. So here we have a bootleg version of what is supposed to be the Silly Ghost or the Tape Mask, as we used to call it. And uh, yeah, it's definitely a very similar shape, but you can tell that it's not a recast very crude sculpt, but I think it has a lot of character to it and it is a very, very soft, floppy vinyl. And as you can tell by the tag on this thing, it was put out by the same company that did that large white and green, almost shriek if you know what I did last Friday the 13th looking mask that Keenan sent in with the last package. This next one is another weird one. Some of you may recognize this, but this is a Still Screaming documentary production mask. These were sent to the set of Still Screaming. And uh, they're just very, very weird masks produced by Fun World. It's a child-sized mask on an adult-sized shroud 
and then the whole bottom of the chin here isn't sewn on because the shroud's way too small to attach to the mask. So you've got a small mask with an even smaller shroud. It's just a very, very weird piece, but nonetheless still pretty cool, so I greatly appreciate it. Next up, we have some actually good looking official ghost face masks. Here we have not one, not two, but three 25th anniversary original tagged masks. So with the 25th anniversary masks, I only pre-ordered one. I only got one, I only got one adult costume, didn't get any duplicates, didn't get any of the child size either. And of course, after seeing how the market reacted to these, how quickly they sold out, and unfortunately how many people have been just getting them and flipping them, I really regretted not picking up at least just a couple of more, um, if nothing, just to have a better choice for like a better copy mask from between those few, but also just to have a few. Well, Keenan decided that he was gonna let go of these three, needed some quick money, offered them up to me, and of course I had to pick them up. So I got these for a very fair price, and uh, there's some very interesting things going on with these. So I'll show you each mask. Pretty beautiful mask here. Beautiful tag, of course. Then, here's this one. They all have very, very distinct shapes which I really like about them. And then we have my favorite. This is my favorite shape of the trio. This will probably be my favorite 25th anniversary out of the four that I now have, these three and the one that I previously bought. So I'll probably put this one hanging up on the wall in the spot where that one was. Just really, really gorgeous masks. And uh, there's something interesting that Keenan mentioned about these that you couldn't really see too, too well over camera, but you can definitely tell in person. So I'm hoping maybe I can show you guys here. So take a look at this tag and note the color of it. It looks almost entirely black, pretty much just like straight black. Then take a look at this tag. Yet again, I don't know how noticeable it is, but this tag is actually like a reddish color. This is more like the dark red color that the original Scream 4 tags was, instead of like the straight black that the others appear to be. So slightly different color tags here. They all do have the same manufacturing date, I do believe, April to June 2021. Yep, they all are those April, June 2021 manufacturing dates. And this brings me to my next point about 25th anniversary masks, not even necessarily these. This whole situation has been uh, obviously great for many collectors because these are great products. I really love them. I think they are some of the coolest things Fun World's done in a long, long time. But now I'm kind of worried that it's turning out to be exactly like the collector's edition situation. Not enough of these masks. They get sold and then resold. And I feel like it didn't even happen as egregiously with the collector's edition masks as it did with these. It took a long, long time for this collector's edition masks to hit the value that people were reselling these on the market for immediately after they released. And at first it was told to us that the product that was out there was all that was out there. There was no more 25th anniversary product coming from Fun World. There was no more that was going to be sold anytime soon. And then I think they saw how hot the market was and started producing more, which is a good thing. I do think there should be more of these out there. I don't want them to be very, very hard to come across or hard for collectors to get their hands on these because they are such nice masks. And then a bunch of places suddenly had more pre-orders open up for more pieces to come in. And of course, all those places sold out almost immediately. And it's been months and months and months since anybody's seen anything. No masks, no updates, other than something to do with shipping issues, them being caught in freight, not being able to make it into the US. And then now that these have made it, they have started now going out to people. People have started receiving these from whoever it is they pre-ordered them from. Most of them have 2022 manufacturing tags and January to February 2022 manufacturing tags, which is kind of interesting if they were pieces that were supposedly already sitting in freight for months, months ago, like this was pre-December. And also, unfortunately, it seems some of these newer masks that people are receiving have messier paint jobs and the dreaded blue dots of death. Maybe I'm being a bit dramatic with that title, but still, it's terrible. Nobody wants those little blue dots forming on their masks. It's a bacterial infection that's caused by something in the fabric, I guess. Obviously, we had those issues with the collector's edition masks, which was yet again a problem because this was supposed to be their high-end, premium product version of this for collectors, which is 
damaging collectors' collections. And it seems that these masks may be doing that yet again. So far, I have not seen that on any of the original run collector's edition, or sorry, the original run 25th anniversary mask coming out. But it seems that the second run are the ones that do have the dots, which is really funny when you think about the juxtaposition that the original collector's editions are the ones that have the dots, and then the re-release second run were the ones that didn't have the dots. You guys are probably wondering what I'm even rambling on about right now. Basically, if you get the new 25th anniversary edition masks, be very wary of putting those masks near your Fantastics, Fearsomes, or just any of your earlier masks, or really, I guess, any of your masks. They're probably masks that need to be quarantined. I have not received any of my ordered 2022 stock, which I guess is gonna be 2022 stock. It was ordered in 2021. Anyways, you get the point. I will be putting mine in plastic bags as soon as I receive them. I'll watch them, see if anything develops with them, but so far from what I've seen in the groups of people receiving their masks, they have had those blue dots, so just something for those of you out there to be wary of. I feel like there's something I'm forgetting. Something else that I picked up this week that I just haven't mentioned yet. Ah, I remember what it was. How about this, guys? I was able to pick up the theatrical standee from my local theater. So I asked them when the movie initially premiered that when the movie's done, could I please have this standee? And I did this just because, of course, collecting Screaming Ghostface stuff. One of the promotional material. Standees are kind of hard stuff to find years and years and years down the road because a lot of this stuff doesn't get kept. It kind of just gets thrown away immediately afterwards. And uh, I almost regret asking for it because this thing is huge. It's at least eight foot three quarters tall, I think. It's massive. It's too large to stand up normally anywhere in my house. So as is now, I currently just have the bottom panel, which says Scream on it, folded under and it kind of will prop up against the wall, but I currently really don't have space for this thing, and the only place I can think to put it is to somehow suspend it above the collection in the collection room, so. Once I get that done, you guys will be seeing an update video. <laughs> and I think that about covers it for today's video, so yet again, guys, I wanna give a massive shout out to Eric Ramon, AKA Whiskey and Coke, for getting me this lovely Mexican Fanta. Still sealed, by the way, forgot to mention that. A massive thank you to Sam Hain Photography, aka Horror Cosplayer, for sending me these lovely boxes of cereal. Can't wait to try these out. Massive thank you to the theater manager for letting me come pick up this giant monstrosity. And a huge shout out to my Canadian cousin Keenan for sending me these beautiful, beautiful Scream 25th anniversary masks and of course the extra throw-ins. With that being said, I guess there's nothing left to do but go ahead and give you guys a close-up of these items. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching. Love you all and see you next time.